The first presenter is uh, Dr. Farid uh, Al Hindawi. He is a, a professor, an emerit, and a PhD holder, and uh, he holds uh, a BA in uh, English language from uh, and literature from Al Mustansariya University, and uh, a master's also in applied linguistics from Edinburgh University, from the United Kingdom published more than 170 uh, research papers, published more than 12 books in linguistics and pragmatics, supervised uh, more than 30 dissertations and theses, uh, as well as uh, examined more than 50 uh, theses and uh, uh, dissertations as uh, chairman of the examining committee. Uh, our the the co-author is uh, uh, with Dr. Farid is Dr. Maha Muhammad. Uh, she is an assistant professor at the Department of English College of uh, Languages, University of Kufa. She holds a PhD in English language and linguistics from the College of Education for Human Sciences. University of Babylon in Iraq. She is interested in cognitive, linguistic, critical pragmatics and discourse analysis. In addition to several national and international publications in her name, she has also supervised many undergraduate research paper. So our researchers will talk about uh, something related to language, which is uh, the, the paper is entitled Electrical Discourse Analysis of Dignity. Uh, in Imam al sajjads Damascus speeches. So please. Um, by way of introduction, my name is Dr. Maha al Mohammed, and um, today I will be presenting a co-authored paper with my um, esteemed professor and mentor, Dr. Farid al-Hindawi. Unfortunately, uh, he is suffering a bit of a health crisis, so he will not be able to join me on stage, but inshallah, I will do our research Inshallah, good. Okay. So um, our paper uh, is by the title, A Rhetorical Discourse Analysis of Dignity in Imam al-Sajjad alayhi salam's Damascus Speech. Uh, so uh, due to time restrictions, I'll be limiting uh, the presentation to a few points. Uh, I'll be presenting a brief introduction, and then I'll move on to the concept of dignity, We'll look at the etymology, the, a few definitions, and maybe some related concepts. And then I'm going to move on to the uh, approach we will be adopting in the study, and that is rhetorical discourse analysis. Um, also, I'll present the model, um, uh, the eclectic, the five-stage eclectic model we have adopted. Uh, we'll also look at some of the findings and conclusions, and then uh, we'll move on to some of the references we have adopted. So uh, starting off with the introduction, uh, the speech delivered by Imam uh, As-Sajjad Ali ibn al-Husayn alayhi salam in Damascus is considered a prominent historical event and a highly rhetorical speech that reflects the courage and steadfastness of the Ahl al-Bayt alayhi salam in the face of injustice and tyranny. It's, it demonstrated As-Sajjad's dignity, familial pride, courage, and dedication to exposing the truth, combining a steadfast power of expression, precision in choice, and emotional impact, the speech is basically considered a hallmark in Islamic rhetoric. Um, uh, I'll be stating some of the aims uh, of the study, since the study focuses on the rhetorical discursive strate strategies underpinning Imam al-Sajjad alayhi salam's va valiant uh, Damascus speech, the purpose of our study uh, is basically to analyze the rhetorical effectiveness of the speech in order to un undercover underlying persuasive intentions, identity patterns, sorry, identify patterns and evaluate the efficiency, the efficiency of discursal strategies. Um, Basically, the, the thorough examination and interpretation of the, these persuasive techniques which are used in the speech aims to highlight the importance and profound impact of Al-Sajjad's argumentation strategies and the influence of his discourse choices in turning the audience around and in his favor. Accordingly, uh, we have set the following research questions 
And uh, since we have adopted Van uh, Den Hoven's 2005 theory of rhetorical discourse analysis, uh, we have a twofold aim, and that is basically uh, looking at the rhetorical devices on one, on one hand and then analyzing the discursive strategies on the other hand. And uh, therefore, we put forth uh, three uh, research questions. Number one, what are the rhetorical devices underlying Al-Sajjad salam's persuasive intentions? So we're going to uh, deal with rhetorical devices and figurative language and analyze that. Number two, how is the maintenance of dignity and uh, familial pride rhetorically effective in conveying uh, the imam's argument. And the notion that we focus on basically in our paper is the notion of dignity. Okay, so we're gonna ask about dignity and how is it um, effective or rhetorically effective uh, in the paper. Finally, our last question is, what are the discourse strategies and linguistic devices governing the communicative purpose of the speech? Uh, so as I said, uh, the basic notion uh, we are dealing with is dignity. So some of you may ask, what is dignity? Uh, we have translated it in Arabic to kalimat uh, at-tafakhur. Okay. Uh, some of you may be questioning uh, the connotation of the word itself, whether it holds uh, a negative connotation. But in fact, it has been used uh, positively in the speech, and we're going to uh, emphasize that. So the sermon basically delivered... Um, um, uh, in it, uh, Imam Sajjal salam, asserted his uh, image with a great, sorry, his lineage, his family and his lineage with great dignity. And he starts off by saying, I am the son of Mecca and Mina. I am the son of Zamzam and Safa. I am the son of the Prophet of Allah. So basically, uh, right from the beginning, his words resonated deeply as he proudly introduced and described his family members in order to familiarize the audience with, um, with their grand status. So what is dignity? Um, uh, etymologically, we have traced the word to Latin, and it comes from the word uh, dignitas, which is derived, and it means basically worthy or deserving. And as a f uh, the fundamental concept underlying dignity is the quality or the state of being worthy of honor respect and esteem. So these three key notions are what we are building um, uh, our concept around. Um, also, um, when we speak of dignity, we basically refer to the inherent value and respectability that a person or thing possesses. However, we know that the concept itself may be related with other concepts. And um, for one, you know, to be honest, at the beginning, we, we translated the word tafakhar into pride, and then we retracted, uh, and then we, uh, we, we swapped it around with the word dignity, right, Dr. Farid? We had a discussion about that, uh, whether to translate tafakhar into pride or dignity, and then we settled on dignity uh, um, because of uh, the research we had conducted, and uh, it's much more closer to... Um, the speech. Um, moving on to RDA, and that's basically an acronym for rhetorical discourse analysis. Some of you may wonder what is rhetorical discourse analysis. It's basically a method of examining and interpreting language in communication with the aim of understanding how persuasive techniques, argumentation strategies, and linguistic choices influence meaning and impact a target audience. Generally, RDA brings together methods and theories uh, from strands of discourse analysis. So it's basically a combination of discourse analysis, classical rhetoric, and rhetorical analysis. An amalgamation of all three approaches um, uh, gives us RDA. And if you are wondering why, it's basically because all three share in common. Yeah. Five minutes. Okay. So can you move? Okay. I'll, I'll move on quicker. Okay. So I'll skip this part, but, but you have a clear image of what RDA is now. Um, uh, so basically the theory or the model I have ad uh, adopted uh, is based on four uh, main devices. I will not go into details, but they talk about number one, uh, there being a narration 
And طبعاً, this is present in uh, the speech or Imam al-Sajjad's speech. He narrates. And then we have a comparison where he compares, okay, his words to what has been said before him by uh, the person that has been allocated by Yazid. And then we have argumentation in Arabic, al-Hijaj, and that's basically the heart of rhetoric. And then we have contextual framing and how he was able uh, to approach a situation from a limited network and flip the tables around and gain uh, his audience. Uh, before you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is our model of analysis. Uh, if you can see, it is a five-stage uh, model, um, and it's built on uh, the starting off with the contextual analysis, moving on to identifying the rhetorical strategies, and then the discursive strategies. And then, as I said, we incorporate the um, uh, the. Mo um, the model I have ad ad adopted, the narration, comparison, argumentation, and contextual framing. And finally, right at the end, we seek to understand the functions behind uh, 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 their use. Okay, um, we're going to skip now to some of the main findings. And um, basically, what I have noticed, uh, or what we have noticed in our research, is the way uh, Al Imam uh, Al Sajjad alayhi salam introduces okay, his lineage, his family. And, and the thing about it is that he, introdu he introduces them both uh, figuratively and literally, and he introduces them uh, from or through their accomplishments. And, um, and, 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 and in that way, this strengthens his credibility and reminds people of his noble lineage. Also, we notice in the speech the use of uh, the, there's a Quranic approach. Uh, so basically, uh, we have an intertextual approach. He makes use of some of the uh, verses from the Quran, hadiths. He also makes use of the adhan itself. Right at the end of the speech, when the mu'adhan um, Yazid tries to stop the speech and the mu'adhan starts and he says, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, I hereby testify that Muhammad is the Prophet of Allah. He uses this part um, um, as the gist of his argument right at the end, and he asks a rhetorical question. So we see that intertextuality. We also, we also note uh, from the analysis the emotional signals uh, that have been uh, used by a sajjad alayhi salam. So he appeals to logos and ethos to rise those emotions uh, in his audience right at the end uh, or right somewhere in, throughout the speech, he says, I think this is enough to um, make anyone cry. And this is exactly what happened to his audience. Um, he was able to introduce his uh, father and grandfather uh, through uh, characterizing their accomplishments. Also, um, I'm going to go through two of the main conclusions. I won't go into details. So um, we have concluded that the approach adopted, adopted by Imam al-Sajjad uh, is an emotional one. And this is why we say he appeals to rhetoric in order to awake the hearts of those brainwashed by the Umayyad propaganda, propaganda sorry, against Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. Moreover, he appealed to truthfulness and factual events and logic, and this is where logos kicks in, to awaken the hearts and minds of his audience and with the overall aim of raising the voice of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, because as you know, this speech was the aftermath of the Battle of Karbala. So he was kind of reviving the battle and reviving those, um, those emotions in, in the audience. Um, these are some of the references that we have, uh, um, we have used in our research, and uh, basically the last one is the most important one, the one we have uh, based our model upon, and that's Van den Hoven, 2005, The Art of Rhetorical Discourse Analysis. Thank you very much for listening, and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Had uh, Maha, and thank you very much, uh, Professor Hindawi. We wish uh, Professor Hindawi a quick recovery of his health.